down on paper, you know, mm. I'm gonna, I'm, it's going to be this and it's going to be that. And like two minutes in, that's completely gone awry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Or then sometimes at the end of a session, you look back at what you had planned to teach and none of you didn't get to <laughs> half of it. You didn't get to even close yeah. to half, half of it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, that's happened to me, sure. Yep, yeah, yeah, usually I'll write something down, I'll make like some sort of um, outline or something before I start mm -hmm. a class just to keep myself on track. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not kind of going all over the place. Right. And uh, oh, it, you know what? I think a lot of times the reason why I, I'll go off of track is because, you know, you, you never know who's going to show up in class, you know? So mm -hmm. if I get some new people in class, then it's kind of like, you know, I'm by myself teaching. So I'm kind of in two different worlds. I'm right. trying to give almost like an intro. And then I'm trying to teach, you know, the other guys at the same time. And, I, and it kind of messes up my whole plan. Yeah, because you because you just have you're like me, right? You just have like the small group thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just have small group, yeah. yeah, yeah. That that's um that's somewhat of a challenge in and of itself when when you have everybody at the same time and there's all different levels and uh, what have you, right? But I'm trying to remember, Paul. Was it me and you? Was it was it when you were on with me that we were talking about Matt Thornton's um one thing one. I'm trying to remember who it was. I don't think it was me. No, we were talking about Matt Thornton. Yeah, and and like uh, the I, how what do they call it? The the three, the three eyes, the three eyes method. I think is what it is. Oh uh, uh, no, that definitely wasn't me. Isolation, no, wasn't. isolation, something, something, something. No, yeah. that wasn't me. But but I, I but what I what I do what I do know is that. Um, and again, I think this is something, this is a problem that we always found in the old days with the JKD people. So much to teach and you want to get it all in, mm -hmm. in one session, right? Mm -hmm. And I know, I, I mean, I don't know if you've ever had this discussion with your teacher, with uh, Kevin Seaman, but what I realized as the years went by, is that you would spend you do a weekend seminar so you spend 10 hours and then you think that everything that you did in that 10 hour span you can come back and put that into one class yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah right you sure. know and and that's because that's because we were never we were never taught how to teach you know we were taught stuff. Yeah. We were shown stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But yep. we were never taught how to teach. Right. And and that is um that's one of the complaints, I guess, I could say I have with the idea of an instructor's conference. You see? Okay. For me, an instructor's conference is a conference at which instructors are taught how what and why to teach yeah but in many instances instructor conference is just an extended seminar again mm -hmm. right yeah I think, I think that's a i think that's a um a problem in, in martial arts just in general not just jkd is you get a lot of people that you know, I've achieved um, an instructor level or a black belt level, and mm -hmm. then they try and teach, and it just doesn't come across. Like they, you know, there's there's a certain way. Um, I remember when I first brought my son to a jujitsu school. He was probably like four years old, yeah. and I brought him to this this school. And shame on me because I should have went there beforehand to see you know how this guy taught. And he was teaching, you know, four, five, and six-year-olds the way you would teach adults. Um, and that does not work, yeah. you know, for little kids. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to really know your audience, know who's right. in your class, 
right. and you have to be able to reach those people. And I think to do that, you have to have some sort of plan, a lesson plan. Um, you have to have an established curriculum. Um, otherwise, you're just shooting from the hip and it, it's probably be very confusing for the people that are taking your class. Right. So, yeah, I mean, there should be some sort of uh, training for instructors. Um, and I know, uh, you know, who does a really good job with that is uh, New Breed, uh, Alex and Luigi. They yeah. do a really good job with yeah. with their instructors, teaching their instructors how to teach. Well, I mean, you know, they they have they have always hung out with um, some of the best in the martial art business world. Yep. You know what I mean? Both on the on the teaching side and on the financial side. So it's not surprising at all that they have done as well as they have. Right. OK, so um, let me welcome those who have chimed in. I really am enjoying this this setting. I got, I got a big monitor and what have you. I, I might not go back home. I might stay. I might just stay up here in Coral Springs and, and do this. Right. So um, Terry Valor is here, of course, number one, as usual. Simon mm -hmm. Alpin here, Brooks Long, Anthony Labrador, Mark David Collins, Mick Shore. Man, with the exception of Brooks and Anthony, everybody else is from the UK. I love it. I love it. Thanks oh, for hanging sorry. out, guys, at 11 o'clock at night. So yeah. um, this was supposed to be, I guess people didn't get the message to email me. Because like I was telling you, we were going to, Hey, Pedro Rodriguez just chimed in from Palm Beach. Um, we were we were going to originally do this on Zoom because I didn't know that I could use um, Be Live and have you know like five or six of my good friends on with me. So then I I converted it back to to Be Live as usual. So I guess people didn't get the um, didn't get the message to email me so I could send them the link to come on screen with me, or maybe they're just camera shy. They're not like you, Paul, you know, yeah. <laughs> right? So I, I did have, um, I did have some ideas for topics regarding lesson plan and curricula and what have you. Um, what, what would you say then, Paul, are key principles that have to be, you have to ensure that you include them in any kind of a curriculum design or a lesson plan for um in jkd okay so well what i do is um you know i i create uh basically i, I guess you would just call it like an outline i don't get too in depth into it because again like when i show up at class i don't know who's going to be there so the mm -hmm. drills uh, might change but the basic structure that I work from is there's got to be some sort of um, footwork, right? Usually I'll start with some sort of footwork drill okay. uh, because I, I, I mean, I firmly believe that footwork is, is like the key to success, um, especially when you're sparring and, and things of that nature. If you don't have good footwork um, if that, and if that's not muscle memory and, and, you know, like just, you got to be at the top of your game with your footwork. Um, so I always include that. Always do some sort of footwork. Always um, some kind of uh, shadow boxing is always included as well. Um, and then I'll go into. Let me ask you this, right? Because I've talked about this before. Um, again, on seminar. Like Sifu and Asana will say, okay, I want you guys to take two minutes and warm up, right? Mm -hmm. Through shadow boxing. And I never see people shadow box footwork, only footwork by itself. Mm -hmm. They go straight to technique. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when they go straight to technique, they go to Muay Thai technique. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm talking. So if I was at, if, 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 so again, we mentioned New Breed. So if, if I was at an Inasano seminar in New York, Inasano seminar in Atlanta, in a sem in a Sano seminar in Michigan, in a Sano se seminar in Texas or whatever. When he says that, invariably, invariably, that's what people do, mm -hmm. right? The other thing that I've noticed when it comes to footwork is that, so wh what do you teach as um, prime, as, as the, the Jeet Kune Do footwork pattern? What do you teach as, as footwork? 
So, I, you know, I start with the basics, um, you know, like step and slide, the shuffles, mm -hmm. you know, th things of that nature. Um, but once we start, uh, you know, once people have gotten that and understand what that is, I'll get way more complicated. You know, we'll start doing pivot step. Um, we'll start pivoting on the foot, on the front foot, on the back right. foot, um, things of that nature, um, shuffling right and left, not just step and slide right and left. Um, right. But, it, but it's funny that you mentioned um, the shadow boxing thing is because a lot of times I'll put I'll put rules to the shadow boxing. So I'll tell my guys, OK, um, today we're going to shadow box two minutes, uh, right lead only. And I only want to see jab cross. That's it. Nothing else. Or I'll say I only want to see defense, no offense. Mm -hmm. um, or, or, and I have done where no hands at all. I just want you to use your footwork. Yeah. Um, be, because again, and what you said, your observations are hundred percent correct. Like every in a sonal seminar that I've been to, it's always, it's always the round kick, you know, someone spinning through, throwing yep. the elbow, you know, it's always the, the same yep. thing and there's nothing wrong with it, it's, but it's always, it's always Muay Thai format. Right. It's, and it's not, so, which, which, which leads me to believe that people are not taught. And, and I hate to separate things because I don't believe in that separation, but it means that people are not taught Jeet Kune Do shadow boxing. They believe in, let's say, let's, for lack of a different expression, the Inasano lineage, shadow boxing means Muay Thai. Yeah. Because most of us or many of us came to Muay Thai through him. Right. Right. You know, yeah. so, yeah, I, so I, I see, I see that over and over again. Right. So, okay. So, so let's stay on the footwork thing for, for a second here. And guys, if um, I, I think my monitor is big enough and my scrolling skills <laughs> will work. If you guys want to um, chime in, I'll try to keep an eye on the comment thing. There's something called comment assistant, but I have no idea what that is and how it works. So I'm scared to, to, to click it on. Um, disappear. <laughs> yeah, you know. It, it, well, anyhow, right? Anyhow, okay. So, 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 this, okay. So now here, let, let's stay on the footwork thing. Okay. Right. Because this yeah, is so. another thing that I observe. People will 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 teach them. Okay, so this is step and slide, right? Okay, this is sliding step. This is push shuffle, and they'll demonstrate it. Mm. Right. Okay. But what are the uses? Mm -hmm. What's slide and step used for? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I well, how do you, do, how do you, I, I'll pick on you because you're here with me. Yeah. Right? What do you teach as the use of slide and step? What's it used for? How well, is it? So, so it, it, that would be used for a longer range, right? Um, if you have just a step and slide is, is for a more close quarter range, right? So if I'm in boxing range and I, and I need to, you know, get a little bit closer the step and slide is shorter distance footwork, right? So if I'm doing a, um, a slide and step or a step and slide, anytime I'm sliding, mm -hmm. it, I'm covering more distance, right? So a lot of times, you know, we'll put it, we'll do it through a drill where we'll just do you know, uh, step and slide, jab, cross, and then I'll make them do either push step or something like that and explain to them that, you know, now I'm out of range. Maybe I'm in uh, kicking range and I want to get into boxing range. So the way to do that is to use a different type of footwork, right? So I would, I would have to do some sort of step and slide, slide and step, something, something where my, my feet are able to cover more ground at a quicker speed. And that, and that's how I explain it to them because I don't, and, and I think that's also important for instructors is um, not just to give, you know, your students things to do, but yeah. to explain why they're doing that. Okay. All right. Um, so my, one of my old, old students, not, he's not old, but from way back, uh, Henry Martinez says, it wasn't like that back when, when I was with you. So Henry, if you're still on and you can type in, um how it was what you remember your your umaa experience what was it that um 
what was our approach to footwork? I, because I, I don't want to embarrass myself here and, and say that I was teaching something to Henry when I actually wasn't. But, uh, but I, and so let, let's. There's let, nothing wrong with that, though. I mean, if you. But, but, but let, let's. If you let's, get at, become a better teacher, that's a good thing. Right. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. See, th this is very interesting, right? Um, th I'll, t I'll just tell you how I teach it. Okay. Yeah. Step and slide is for a thing that we call general mobility. So if you watch, I'll date myself, if you watch Muhammad Ali come into the ring and the announcer is doing whatever announcers do and the boxers are, are okay, so Henry says JKD, footwork was JKD, Muay Thai was Muay Thai. Okay, I got it now, right? Um, if you watch what they're doing, what a, a boxer is doing up on the toes, moving around the ring, if you analyze it, they, they're using step and slide. Mm -hmm. So step and slide is for general mobility. It's not for anything specific other than moving around. Mm -hmm. okay? Slide and step. Now, slide and step, a.k.a. quick advance, quick retreat, mm -hmm. can be used to cover more ground and what have you. But more often than not, Slide and step is used to launch a kick and attack. Mm -hmm. So step is replaced by the kick, mm -hmm. right? So now we have a footwork pattern that's used for launching a kick and attack. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to have a commensurate pattern for launching a punch and attack. That's mm -hmm. push shuffle's job. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So they're taught specifically. So you talked about range. So you use step and slide to take yourself in and out of the three combat distances, out of range, rim of fire, and in range. When you're at rim of, rim of fire, that's where the footwork is now applied to launch the kick and attack or to launch the punch and attack. Mm -hmm. But, but there are specific things because the way the footwork, um, the, the mechanics of the footwork, to use step and slide to kick, it's not going to generate maximum power. Right. It's slide and step, mm -hmm. replacing the step with the kick. And I, I do not hear enough JKD instructors talking about footwork that way. Mm. You know? Okay. I, and I've seen it. They teach the footwork, and then they go to technique. Okay, and and, and the, the application of the footwork is not so. Two weeks ago, when I was up here for part one of the JKD Kali educational series that I'm doing, we did footwork combinations. Oh, how'd you do that? Oh yeah, yeah. You see, what's an example of that? Yeah. So so here so here would be here would be the beginner approach to it. I step and slide forward. I step and slide back. Yeah. I cover outside. I cover mm -hmm. inside, right? Yes. Or right and left. Mm -hmm. depending. Okay. But that's step and slide by itself. Mm -hmm. I can also go in any direction that I want. I could step and slide and then go push shuffle. Mm -hmm. Or I could step and slide and then go slide and step. Yes. And I ask the group, I ask the group a question. I go, how do you know? So I'll ask you. And again, I hate to pick on you, but you showed up, right? That's all right. <laughs> okay. How do we know that footwork, it's a trick question. How do we know that footwork combinations exist? See, well, you, you, it's easier, it's easy to answer it if you've been with me for a long time. Right. <laughs> right. But how do we know that footwork well, combinations exist? Well, well, do you mean in terms of of like actual sparring because yeah in terms yeah, of because that, it, how do we know it naturally that? comes out i mean it's going to naturally come out naturally or should it be taught well it needs to be taught so that they're doing it at the appropriate time right but i but yeah so well i do teach and and when you started explaining it i do teach that those combinations 
well, I'll do, uh, you know, like a step and slide forward and then, and then shuffle back or a push step forward and a step and slide back. And I, I do I, do that. Mm -hmm. But, but, but why? Well, I think, it, I, think it, I think it relates to, to, to timing and distance. But is that all? So here's the answer. Okay. Right? If I punch and then kick a two-hit combination, right? Mm -hmm. Punch to kick. Footwork is used to apply that, that combination of techniques. Sure. That's how I know that footwork combinations exist. Okay, I see. So I can doing. remove the technique mm -hmm. and practice the footwork combination by itself. Yes. So push shuffle to slide and step. Yes. So now when I teach them straight lead to sidekick, mm -hmm. they already know the footwork for it. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100% makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never saw anybody do that. No. Um, yeah, I mean, we do we do teach that, and, and uh, Sifu Kevin did that too with us, uh, where we would do the footwork all by itself, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. Um, and I know, and I know that's part of his curriculum as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It, but it should. But so even if I teach the footwork combination, it shouldn't be isolated. It has to be connected to the technique. So so how would you teach that? Would you would you isolate the footwork first? And then mm -hmm. add the technique to it. Yep. Yep. Because now they understand why mm -hmm. it was done that way. Okay. You see? I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, they, now they understand. Because, see, if, if imagine if we did it the other way around, right? Imagine if it was like, okay, so what I want you to do, I want you to, to, move, to go straight lead and then go lead sidekick. Mm-hmm. And they have no idea how their legs are supposed to move. Right. You see? So, th so they should not be separate. And I always see people separating them. They teach the footwork and then they don't mention it anymore. Mm -hmm. And they, they go, they go jab cross, you know, whatever. Right. And, and that probably leaves the student confused as to why did we just do that? Yes. Yeah. Because there's too there's too much separation. And mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm a I'm you know, I, the, 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 there's too much the idea of separatedness in Jeet Kune Do, right? Well, I think that I think that leads to a continuity of lesson plan, right? So when you create when you create a lesson plan, it, there should be, you know, my my goal, and, and the way I usually create them is I'll 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 go it from from backwards, right? So I'll mm -hmm. say, all right, my goal my goal is to teach. Uh, Jab, uh, cross across lead kick, right? Okay. So that that will be my goal, and I'll start with footwork, build footwork up to to some striking, some punching, add the kicking technique, and then at the end, add it all together to make that one combination that that we're working on. Right. Um, so, so the entire class is working towards that one goal. Um, right. And, and I think that's a good way to keep a comprehensive class instead of teaching. Um, okay, today we're going to do um, push push step, and then we're going to move on to uppercuts, and then we're going to go to uh, spinning hook kick. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. But like, what does yeah. that mean? There's there's got to be there's got to be a, a way, right, to show how everything is related to everything else. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, look, again, if you're in a Sano lineage and if you're in a Sano lineage like me, you got exposed to um, what I like to tease Richard Torres and call uh, Jeet Kune Do uh, associated disciplines. Right. So, <laughs> so we got Kali, we got Muay Thai, we got Wing Chun, we got Savat, we got Penjak Sila, mm -hmm. right? We got Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mm -hmm. what, what have you. All those things. Right, they're not supposed to be separate from each other. I don't care I, 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 if you if you have a school and at your school you have these separate classes. That's fine, nothing wrong with that. But I say you better have a class that's called integration. 
Okay. You know what I mean? Because sure. I understand in this world, in this world, you got to go where the markets are. Mm -hmm. So if there's a market for Muay Thai, and you and you want to you want to maximize, right, the success of your school, mm -hmm. have a Muay Thai program. Okay, have a this program, have a that program, whatever. There's a hungry crowd, you feed them. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna stay true to your JKD um, uh, uh, legacy, you better have a class where everything is integrated. Yeah, but now to play devil's advocate here, mm -hmm. the the Richard Torres crowd would be w would say, "Well, now you're not teaching JKD, right? Now, yeah. now you bastardize JKD, right?" That would be incorrect. Right. <laughs> well, I agree with that, but I'm just saying right. that, right? that would be that would be incorrect. See, because because if I teach, right? If I go, okay, well, I'm teaching, I'm teaching JKD, right? I'm teaching the Jun Fan method. What's the Jun Fan method going to have? It's going to have kicking and punching in it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. And if we if we look at um, if we look at uh, what do you call it? Um, Ji Kundo commentaries on the martial way. Mm -hmm. There's there's direct that directives in there to look into elbowing and kneeing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if That's I want to be good at something, if I want to get good at punching and kicking, shouldn't I study with the best punchers and kickers that I, if possible? So I, I do that. that. Right. But I've heard, but I've heard people on the other side say that it, that's already there. It's in the philosophy. You could just do it. You don't need to study with anyone. You could just apply it. Oh, I don't okay. agree with that. But, but well, okay. But if what they mean it right, because Bruce Lee didn't go study with a boxer. Right. Right. Okay. So if they're following Bruce Lee's example, where he didn't go study with a boxer, um, so now. I don't want to go study with a boxer. Okay, I don't have to because there's boxing instruction available to me, right, remotely. I can mm -hmm. do it. I don't have to go anywhere. We, again, in a Sano lineage, I would say, we got into the mode of going to people because that's what he did. And very mm -hmm. often he made the same people to whom he was going he made them available to us. Mm -hmm. So we, so for us, that was normal to go somewhere. Okay. You see? Yes. So, so we were doing, I would say, the same thing that Bruce Lee was doing. If Bruce Lee was reading about kicking and maybe watching a film of somebody kicking and then mm -hmm. doing it on his own, that is the equivalent of me going to a kicking instructor like Salem Ashley, mm -hmm. right? And learning from him. It's the same right. thing done differently. Right. It's the acquisition of knowledge, you see, and information, yep. and then the training of it. In Bruce Lee's time, there, were, there, there weren't people to go to. So he had to do it all on his own. So we can do it all on our own if we want. Or so you I, so I have a question. Uh -huh. I got a question. Maybe you can answer this. And I, I've been thinking about this question a lot. Um, did I know Bruce Lee um, had that training in Seattle with um, judo? Yeah. So was he? Did he have any awareness of? Jiu-jitsu, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, or or the Russian sambo in his time? I've, I've never heard anyone say that he did, and I was just curious well, maybe if you knew that. I I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not I'm not the world's greatest Bruce Lee historian, but let's say Bruce, so Bruce Lee is in Seattle from, what, 59 to 64 or something? Something like that, yeah. In 1964, who anywhere in the world outside of Brazil was aware of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Well, probably, yeah, probably no one because it's Nobody. such an isolated place, yeah. Nobody. So if Russian sambo existed in 1964, who was aware of it outside yeah. of 
the Russians do ensemble. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I doubt very much. That, I mean, I don't know the history of it. I don't know when whoever is the Japanese guy that went to Brazil, you know, and met up yeah. with with Helio or whoever in the Gracie clan he met up with. I don't know the history right. of that. So I can't say. Okay. But I was just curious because I know that they were doing a lot of fights um, in Brazil at the time. And I don't, you know, I don't know the popularity of it. If it, if that reached the rest of the martial art world no. at that time, which I, no. I, don't, I, I don't, I know. I don't think the world at large was introduced to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in 93 at UFC one. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, prior to that, who were the people that were aware of it and not talking about it? The JKD guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right? Yeah, because Paulson was training it in what, Paulson like was training the 80s? Them. Vunak was training with them, right? Yeah. In fact, I think in the JKD clan, Vunak was actually the first, I think. Oh, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Before even Eric. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, yeah. So, once again, you got the JKD clan ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So, but generally in the 60s, I don't think so. I think the 60s martial art world is very, very different. Yeah. Very, very different from from what um what we have today. Yeah. You know, what we've had for the past for the past 30 years or or what have you. Yeah. Right. Uh but yeah, but he he was enrolled at um Fred Sato's uh judo place. Right. Right. So, yeah. So that's why on Wednesday when we were talking, I said, I, I think it would be safe to say had he lived, uh, grappling would probably have been something that he went more deeply into. Because if you look at combat skills, kick and punch and trap and Bruce Lee's there. Mm -hmm. Grappling, he's there. But we've only seen it cinematically. Right. We don't know, you know, about right. practical real world. Um, whatever. So I, I, that's why I surmise that that might have been. Um, the, right. So you, even C. P. Dan said that that they they did grappling techniques, but they didn't contest them. Yeah, and I remember and, him uh, saying that in an interview. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, sometimes sometimes C. P. Dan in his interviews, he gets himself in trouble. Um, you know, there's there's still the whole thing when when he said to. Um, uh, Rick um, Rick Tucci, right? That there were three separate arts, you know, mm. and and um, and it's 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 difficult to defend that after the fact because mm. what's the fact? He said it. Right. So when I come along and I go, well, yeah, he did say it, but he misspoke. Yeah. Right. But and I and, and and even to say that he misspoke might not be be accurate. But what I mean is I can understand why he would say something like that, because I can understand the context in which he's saying it. I can understand the thought process that he was going through at the time of the mm -hmm. interview. Right. And why he would choose those words, mm -hmm. why he would choose to say it that way. Yeah, because he has no idea that that video 30 years later 40 years later is going to have to be defended yeah you see because yeah. even in the 90s jkd world right it, it, it's it's like I, I i this is another thing i've said before in fact i'll ask him if uh, when, when i see him in the next couple of weeks I'll ask him if he's if he's yet aware that he is a worldwide phenomenon. Okay. You don't think that he knows that he is? No. Okay. No. Okay. I think we go, okay. Who are you? Like well, I'm Dan Inosano. Um I, I I have a martial arts school. I call it the Inosano Academy. <laughs> it's so humble. Right? Okay. Yeah. And, and well. You know, I teach uh, uh, Jeet Kune Do and and, and uh, Filipino martial arts, and 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 yeah. it would probably take like number ten and for him <laughs> to say, "Well, I've been 
pretty much around the world more than once. Right. <laughs> you know, um, I've logged millions of miles on American Airlines um, since about 1980, right. traveling to teach um, tens of thousands of people. Right. I would have to say, and like 10, 15 times and, and exhaust him in, into the new words to use before mm -hmm. he could come up with that. That'll never come up in the first five ands. Yeah, he's yeah, he's too he humble. Does, to he, that he, doesn't, yeah. he doesn't yeah. understand it. He doesn't understand it yet. So well, to I, say, well, there's three certificates. Um, so yeah, there were three separate arts. That that's that's like an expedited way. You know how sometimes, you know, when we say um, long story short, mm -hmm. that means that you're leaving out a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> But you don't have the time and you think that people really aren't even that interested mm -hmm. that they want to hear about it. You know what I mean? So you well, decide, I'll say something else instead. I think most people aren't that interested. It's just the JKD nerds that are. Because <laughs> <laughs> you sit there and you get new students that come in and you try to, you know, you can't go into some long winded explanation of what JKD is on day one. Right. You know? No. No, you, you can't. You can't. In, in, in fact, um, I, I, what, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say that, and, and I think that's that's one of the problems with JKD is is that you know people feel the need that they need to sit here and, and explain it to to new people, where it's mm -hmm. like, hey, let's just go work out. You know, if you like yeah. it, you enjoy it. There'll be plenty of time to explain, you know, what what we're doing here in detail. You yeah. Know? Yeah, in detail definitely is not what you try to do um, if you're conducting, let's say, like an introductory, an intro lesson at a mm -hmm. school. You know, that's that's not the time for for de for detail. I mean, um, but once again, right? Once again, we we have to we have to be okay. Tell me what you think of this. See. If we were Taekwondo instructors, we wouldn't have to go into detail in anything because people already have a, a preset idea. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, they'll probably call it a karate school. Mm -hmm. So they'll expect it to look a particular way. Mm -hmm. So if I, so if I'm, if, if, you know, at the Taekwondo school, they give you, uh, when you sign up for the intro, they give you a free gi, mm -hmm. right? So the second you put that on, you're in because yeah. you now look right. like a karate person, mm -hmm. you know, and, and what's the trick? They don't give you a belt, right? But after your first intro class, yeah. They award you, right? Yes. So now it's like, oh, so yes. if I keep coming, I'll get more awards of yes. colored, colored string. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Right? right? So we got to learn, right? As JKD people, we got to learn from that. We yeah. can't copy it, right? And start putting people in geese and, and what have you. No. But we do have to find some way. And that becomes part of lesson plan and curriculum because, you know, it, you could look at it this way. Your curriculum starts at the intro class. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the first step mm -hmm. towards the development of a new student. Mm -hmm. So how you conduct an intro yeah. program is crucial as well and then there's the whole you know first impressions thing sure right yeah yep i agree 100 percent um I, I think uh definitely the first class uh that impression that a student gets is really going to either you know get them to sign up or get them to not come oh, back yeah. Yeah. yeah right um okay so i i wasn't looking at the comment stuff but i saw that uh ricard said um He's always trained footwork separately and then combine more advanced footwork with them without execution of, of technique. Um, doesn't everyone do it that way? 
I don't know. But but again, I, I would ask you, Ricard, um, what what is it that you consider to be advanced footwork? You know, it, it's like I just, sometimes I, I wonder about stuff like that. We, we got basic footwork and then we got intermediate footwork and then we got advanced footwork. Right. And I and I, I ask that question because it's like um, it's like knife techniques. Mm. Like, I think a, I think a lot of that depends on the athleticism of the, of the student, too, though. Hmm. Right. Okay. But, but, but here, 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 hear me out on this, this uh, co comparison. What is. What's beginner knife? versus intermediate knife versus <laughs> advanced knife you know what i'm saying right because beginner knife could kill you right <laughs> right you see yeah. so maybe there's such a thing as well knife is not beginner level mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying yeah, so knife, yeah. right knife is taught to people mm -hmm. who are at the intermediate to advanced level as students mm -hmm. Yes. Not to beginner students. Yes. You, you, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? yeah. I don't teach any weapons to beginners at all. And any weapons training is, is held for, um, uh, late intermediate and advanced. Okay. So I, okay. yeah, I don't teach that at all because, and, and that's really for two reasons. One, I want, I want the student to have a, a really good, uh, base structure on, on, uh, basically, you know, like kinesiology, like how they're using their body. Right. Okay. Using their body in the proper way. So that's the one reason. Second reason is um, I, I, I don't want that person to have false confidence in in weapons. I don't want them to be able to say, oh, uh, I can defend against a knife attack. I learned it you know, on Tuesday. Right. Uh -huh. I want that person to have experience sparring, have experience having a good day, having a bad day. Right, getting punched in the face, getting choked out, choking someone out, get, so they understand that you know there's no false confidence that every person, no matter you know what they look like, what their size is, um, you know what their age is. Right, an old lady can kill you just as much as a young man can kill you with a, with a knife. So yeah. I want them to understand that before I start teaching them that stuff, so that they they don't you know God forbid come into a confrontation where someone pulls out some sort of edge weapon and they're like, Oh yeah, I learned this on Tuesday. I can disarm this guy. All right. Ah, interesting. Interesting. All right. So tell me what you make of this, because I will put double stick, for example, into the hands of the beginner. Okay. Okay. Now. And so here's an example of, of why this was, uh, let's see the first, the first time, first time I went out to the Inasano Academy might've been, we, we went to the Kali Academy in 83. Um, but I don't know if I picked up, um, a brochure there. So at some point I picked up in the Sano Academy brochure and it said that the weapons training, um, helped to, uh, turbocharge. Mm. right the empty hands so mm. i never forgot that and i re and i and i saw it myself mm -hmm. so for example if i go double stick right and i teach somebody how to pivot and hit like this mm -hmm. and then pivot and hit like this right what we'll do sometimes is to drop the stick and show them how that pivot mm -hmm. right and so now the idea oh when i'm doing this when i'm doing these coordination drills it's lending coordination to empty hands as well. Mm -hmm. So from the get go, I have them combining the idea that the sticks, right? The weaponry is supposed to go to use a terrible expression hand in hand with, mm -hmm. with, with, with the empty hands. Yeah. You see, so that, that's why, that's why I, that's why I do it. Right. Yeah. And, 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 uh, I'm okay with that. I'm o I'm okay with that because that makes the sense. Student would never, would never get double dagger. No, you see what I'm saying, yeah. right? Yeah, you, you still you still got it. Right. You, you can't you can't go okay. Well, weapons training is 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 right. turbocharging the empty hands. Okay, so here's stick and dagger. 
because right. they're not ready for that. No. Right? They're not they're not mm-hmm. ready. They're not ready for that at all, right? Okay, so Ricard said the combination of footwork, so slide and step and push step. Where did you all get this name push step from? I never learned it as push step. You never heard push step? No, it was always push shuffle. Where where did push step come from? I don't know. Well, I there's definitely a, a bunch of different terminology. I mean, there's, there's <laughs> it all kind of means the same thing. <laughs> push step. No, man. See, that's why we got to come up with the just you know a curriculum with all the same terminology so we, we all can be the same. Well, did, but, well I mean, no, maybe, maybe not, right? Because yeah. I realized, for example, looking at um, looking at um, um, Bruce Lee's fighting method, okay? Okay. Step and slide does not exist. Slide and step does not exist. Right. Push shuffle does not exist. Mm-hmm. But now if you examine it, what we call step and slide is advanced shuffle, retreat shuffle, and sidestep. Mm-hmm. Okay? So I took that and turned it into an experiment. So I have somebody brand new in front of me. And I go, okay, so what I want you to do is the advanced shuffle. And they look at me like, what, 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 I have no idea what you mean. Mm-hmm. And then I say to them, okay, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to step and slide. Okay? Step with your front foot, slide with your back foot, and come back to your starting position. Mm-hmm. Oh, Done. Mm-hmm. Now I want you to reverse that slide with your back foot and kick your front foot into action and step. Right. Done. You see, but advance. So, so slide and step when you analyze it in Bruce Lee's fight and method is quick advance and quick retreat. Yes. You see, so you say to them, okay. I want you to do a quick advance. They don't know how to do it. Right. So, so I wasn't there, right? I have no idea who came up with these names, but, but in the eighties, we were not taught by those names, advance shuffle or quick advance and whatever. It was all step and slide, slide and step. Nice push step. And what mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. Maybe, maybe, maybe the way the the names have uh, changed for for different instructors is maybe the way they explain it. I I I don't know. You I, know maybe the explanation became the name. I, I don't know. I call it evidence of the continuous evolution of Jeet Kune Do, even mm. in the language, even in the way we describe things. I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you a quick story. You you probably heard this, right? Um, there was a time where it was called step and drag. Mm. And, and Inosano said he didn't like the sound of that. Yes. You know, because drag in drag kind of implies slow. Yep. You know what right. I mean? Right. So so that's how it became step and slide. Mm-hmm. Right. Um so again, right? Um there's there's so much. There's so much. I mean, you could, you could probably have people work on footwork for the first month of their membership. You could, yeah. It'd be pretty <laughs> boring, but <laughs> right, you know, right? Okay, all right. right. So let, let's go back to um, the questions that uh, that I thought of here. Um, how how does the philosophy? of using no way as way apply to the design of a Jeet Kune Do curriculum? Well, that that's a tough question because th- that's kind of like taking, like we were talking about. Oh, wait, I think, hang on a second here. Well, so my good I, friend and uh, Kempo, um, Miami uh, Kempo uh, instructor, Alfred Magnan says, Step drag and drag step and push drag was Ed Parker vocabulary. Oh, interesting! Interesting. Thanks, Alfred. I did not know that. Wow. Probably should have read. I should. I should have read more. Um, 
uh, um, and Parker Insight, Kempo Insight books, right? Yeah. Yeah, because because um, I saw I saw it, but I didn't mention it. But my good friend Michael Marcellus Brown, he's like, "Oh, you just said you don't know the history. Why don't you know the history?" <laughs> like, like because I get I everything. Yeah, I don't feel like I have to. I would love. I would love to. I told Richard Torres one time, right, that I hated him because if I tried to collect everything that he has collected. Right over the past fifty years, I would die. Right, I would never have enough money, and I would die before I could. Yeah, where's he find all that stuff anyway? Man, look, yeah, I, I wish I could be that level of a Bruce Lee fan. Yeah, but I'm not. Right, so I don't, I don't find it absolutely necessary to know um, what year it was that Bruce Lee studied judo yeah. in Seattle and then I and then I have to know what the history of Brazilian jiu-jitsu is or what the history of Russian sambo is right. um because Brazilian jiu-jitsu and Russian sambo are not priorities for me mm -hmm. you know what I mean and I got there, there's other things that that that, that I want to spend time on but yeah I, I could be more impressive of a podcast host if I was that font of knowledge and information. You know, if I was that much of a nerd, I could tell you, oh, well, Russian right. Sambo, boom, 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 this. You know, uh, right. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, boom, 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 this. Yeah, yeah, that'd be kind of impressive. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think, I think it's interesting. I think all that stuff is interesting, but I don't yeah. commit it to, to memory, you know, because it's not, it's not going to make or break, you know, what, right. what we're trying to do here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So Alfred says um, the Kempo Infinite Insights books. You'll see a lot of common thread with JKD. Mm -hmm. I don't doubt it. I don't. I don't doubt it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we we've never we've never really heard. Um, we know that Bruce Lee and Ed Parker and James Lee and some other people. You know, like when when we talk about bruce lee and the ed parker kempo connection one of the one of the things that you mainly hear about is the you know that a bunch of ed parker's black belts left yeah. to go study with bruce lee mm -hmm. you know included in asano and poti and and um mm -hmm. and uh steve golden and, and and all those guys larry right? hartzell as well yeah right mm -hmm. um but what we don't hear about is well what what went on between ed parker and bruce lee if anything mm -hmm. you know what was there was there any kind of exchange between them or or what have you because i mean there's got to be right there's got to be you would think so yeah i mean yeah. that's for yeah. both of them martial arts was was their lives at that time so you mm -hmm. would think there had to be some sort of exchange uh, of ideas and things. I mean, I, I feel like Bruce Lee was always had an open mind towards, you know, researching for sure, any, you know, and, and why can't we keep doing that? Well, because he did it all for us. You see? Gotcha. So, yeah. So, I mean, so why mess with well, perfection? So. Yeah. Right. Why mess with perfection? Right. Okay. Exactly. Bruce Lee, during the time that he 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 was alive, did all the research and set it all up for us. Perfect. Right now, the only reason you wouldn't know that is if you didn't get it the right way from him. Oh. <laughs> you see, if you I didn't gotta, get I the real a different church to go to. Yeah, if you didn't get the real Jeet Kune Do from Bruce Lee, right? That's <laughs> why you wouldn't you wouldn't know that. Gotcha. All right. All right. All right. Well, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> right. Okay. But let, let's go back to that idea of um, okay. the no way as way. I, the so, no way as way. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I think it, that that's one of those concepts that's hard to explain to 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 a beginner. You know, it, you explain to someone, oh yeah, you know, no way is way. They're like, what do you what are you talking about? Well, There's got to yeah, be. Yeah, but, but not not how. But the question isn't how would you 
explain it to a beginner. The question is, how would that apply to the design of a GPU? Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, that, you know, I'm not really sure it, 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 when you talk about designing um, a curriculum because there, in the beginning, um, you, you know, the way I think about building a curriculum is I think about building a house, right? You got to dig a hole, you got to create a foundation. So there, there has to be a way to teach someone. They have to learn the way of using your body because there's, there's a correct way of using your body in an incorrect way, right? So if, if I punch like this, obviously that's incorrect, mm -hmm. right? I need to punch that way. So there is a, a way to show someone how to punch, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, in the formation of the, the, of the curriculum or the lesson plan, there has to be a way. And that way is, is the correct way to use your body in whatever tool you're teaching. Okay. Um, once you start getting towards uh, more intermediate and advanced, I think using no way as way would really tailor more towards sparring. Once you get into that sparring aspect where, okay, I, I, I have my foundation, I have the understanding of how to use my body in, in a combative form, but now I don't have to conform myself to a way I can be more freelanced if, in a way to express that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, that's how I would do it. I don't know. What do you think? Okay. So one of the greatest things that ever happened in my Jeet Kune Do education was when Daniel Lee said, using no fixed way mm. as a as way. Okay. Right? Okay. So then what I did with that was to take it back to my limited experience with Shotokan. Okay. Every Shotokan class started the same way. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every, so obviously when it's time to practice the kata, it has to be done the same way. Otherwise you're doing the kata incorrectly. But mm. what I'm talking about is the warm-ups, every class, the same thing, mm. right? Um, the kihon, the, base, the, the basic technique practice, the same thing. Now, that's not to say that, of, of course, they do that because how do you get good? You repeat stuff. Sure. Right? Okay. And you don't want to be halfway cultivated, which leads to ornamentation, right? right? You mm -hmm. want to be all the way cultivated, okay? But so all of that for me is put into a, a, a traditional or commercial uh, martial art uh, expression, disguise the repetition. I see where you're going with this. Okay. See? Mm -hmm. Right. The first mm -hmm. time I heard that, I thought, oh, you poor bastards. Mm -hmm. right? You don't have multiple ways mm -hmm. to do the same thing. So like I was just telling you, right? Mm -hmm. When I teach people to go inward like this and inward mm -hmm. like this, and then tell them throw away the sticks, right? And mm -hmm. focus on the rotation of the body mm -hmm. and hit and hit. I've mm -hmm. now used two ways to teach that punching thing. Mm -hmm. You get you get what I'm saying? So yes. I'm not using any fixed way to teach the punching. Yes. Sir. That's how that's how I interpret it. And, okay. I, and, and I do it that way because Daniel Lee inserted that adjective fixed mm -hmm. into the quote. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. That's so, cool. so that that's interesting that you know you you related that to your karate experience. So for yes. me, I never had that experience. My uh -huh. my first experience with martial arts was JKD. Right. Yeah. See. Okay. So, so 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 see. I hate to say this, but that's that can be if JKD is your first experience. Mm -hmm. That could be a disadvantage. 
Because mm-hmm. you don't have anything to compare and contrast. Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? But yes. for some, right? But for somebody who who is like, you know, so if you if you come in if you come into JKD and and um, it's um, you know the, the attack by combination, right? You're told, okay, so there's this thing called attack by combination. Mm-hmm. You could you could end up thinking, well, this is a JKD thing, mm-hmm. right? You know. And and yeah, then yeah. maybe and then maybe one day you get into a discussion with somebody, and they go, well, yeah, boxers attack by combination, mm-hmm. and then you go, oh, so wait, it's not JKD, and now you're confused because, well, that, right? And that was me though. That I mean, that was me until I started reading books on other martial arts and stuff. That yeah. you know, to me, it was like, oh wow, Bruce Lee invented attack by combination. You know, like like yeah. that was. <laughs> Sure. I mean, I didn't know any better, you know, because right. that's yeah. what I was, you know, taking yeah. at the time. Yeah. Again, again, it's it's one of the it's one of the um, inherent problems in the cultivation of understanding of Jeet Kune Do, mm-hmm. but also dissemination of Jeet Kune Do information. Right. Right. You know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, the, are you referencing like, like, you know, the Tao and, and, and how that was basically his notes and people just assume that that was, you know, his quotes. That's an example. Yeah. You know, and, um, as James Bishop has said, it doesn't help that the Bruce Lee foundation continues to publish stuff as if mm. you know what i mean yes yes right yep that once again it's well <laughs> the problem for us would be okay how much of this is important to people other than us mm-hmm. right you, you know what i mean yeah right how 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 because so like my jeet kundo senior chris kent so he did the TEDx talk. Yeah, that was okay. great. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I was like, oh man, Chris used something that's so familiar mm-hmm. for people like me. Right. And I was like, I really thought he was going to go differently. And then I go, Dwight, you idiot. It's the TEDx audience. It's perfect. <laughs> right. The way he approached it. But mm-hmm. for somebody like me, it'd be like, oh, I wish he'd have said something different because mm-hmm. I've heard that stuff so often. Yeah. So that's a that's another danger, right? You we, you got to be able. So it's like what you were saying earlier. You get you got to know how to talk to your audience because if you think that what you find fascinating about Bruce Lee and Jeet Kune Do is what the average person finds fascinating. <laughs> and Jeet Kune Do, you might be in for a huge, huge surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah well, I so think yeah. I think that's why I have. I think that's one of the reasons why I have problems with my marketing. You know, where I I'm like kind of marketing to a a martial arts crowd, where it's like most of the crowd out there are not martial arts people. You know, no. and I, and and I feel like I've I've lost touch so much with not being a martial art person that it's hard mm-hmm. for me to understand their mindset. Uh, look, for me, the basic the basic approach is this, right? Um, enroll, or was, I should say, right, when I ran the school. You never water it down, mm-hmm. okay? You never water it down. Mm-hmm. You find... You, you find out what is, so for example, somebody says, I want to study, um, I want to study martial arts for self-discipline, to cultivate self-discipline. Mm-hmm. Do I have a Bruce Lee story about self-discipline? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I want to study martial art to be more spiritually evolved mm-hmm. do i have a jeet kundo reference 
for spiritual evolution. Okay. You see? Mm -hmm. I want to study martial art to feel more confident. Do yeah. I have a Jeet Kune Do story, Bruce Lee or not? Right. Right? right? So, so you don't water it down. You learn how to position yourself as a Jeet Kune Do instructor you learn how to how to position yourself differently from the karate people who are your competitors. You see, remember they they don't have to do much to impress people because they look like karate is supposed to look like. Yes. We don't. Yes, and then people know what karate is. Right. So we gotta work a little bit differently. You see. Yeah. Now, why do why do they come to us? They go off. Oh, that Bruce Lee, he was a badass. So we have to learn how to take advantage of that. Because I'll tell you what, right? The karate people are using Bruce Lee. Yes. Because yeah. somebody, right? Somebody goes, how, how many times did you hear this? How many times did you hear this? H how, how did you get into martial arts? Oh, Bruce Lee. You know, mm -hmm. my mom, so my mom put me in the Taekwondo school. Yes. All the time. Yeah. Well, that's because JKD wasn't available. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right? So we still have even that to overcome mm -hmm. from the past, <laughs> right? Yeah, We're still yeah. working on overcoming that from the past because yeah. imagine how many people we lost because JKD was not available. Oh yeah. Right. But oh, we yeah. have the founder of Jeet Kune Do being the source of inspiration for mm -hmm. them, but they couldn't find a JKD. Um, they couldn't find a JKD school. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. You, so 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 we have it. So we got to learn how to position ourselves. So one of the things I, I don't know if 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 we talked about that, um, but I used to do this with with the kids. Give them a piece of paper, self hyphen, self hyphen, self hyphen, and go. Okay, so you're here to study self defense, but what if I tell you that studying the art of self defense can help you to develop other areas of yourself? So mm. can you give me three words? That start with self. Okay, I like that. Right? Yeah, and and then I and then I'd say, and if you can't do it by yourself, ask mom and dad to help you. <laughs> right. So I get them involved. Right. So you know, the first one is self discipline. You know, that's the first one that mom or dad. Yeah, for mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> right? right. You know. So then self confidence comes. You know, mom might 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 um, insert self respect or whatever. So now, right, now I'm showing them how studying self-defense with me can help to develop or enhance those other self-attributes. Mm -hmm. I'm making that connection. Right? Okay. And, yeah, I like that. And differentiating myself from what other people are doing. And I have Bruce Lee stories to back all of that up. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. Now, now how do you do that on a large scale though? On a large scale? Yeah. Like on a large, yeah. So I remember like last time we were talking about like the, the JKD kid movie, right? Mm -hmm. Remember? So, mm -hmm. so how do we do that on a, on a large scale so that the, the public understands or relates Bruce Lee to JKD? You know what I'm saying? Um, you use social media because okay. that's the way to get everything out to people, right? Um, I would say there are more people who are aware now, but the JKD kid movie would do it mm -hmm. like that. Like that, yeah. For yeah. sure, mm -hmm. right? Because think about it. Was the was the term Jeet Kune Do used in Dragon the Bruce Lee story? I don't know because I, I it was such a long time ago. I haven't seen that since probably the nineties. <laughs> okay, right. See, I don't I, I, I don't think it was. I, I I don't remember. I don't know. I I don't think it was. I think I think the only time that Jeet Kune Do was used is in the episode of um, of Longstreet. That it was definitely yes. You know, 
I think that's that's yeah. the only thing. I don't think it's it's ever been used in any movie, right? Do you know if 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 it? Well, I mean, Thank Warrior you. isn't. Um, Warrior. No, it's not was, using Warrior. Was Jeet Kune Do used in Birth of a Dragon? I can't I don't remember. So. I, don't I don't, but so. I don't think so. I, I watched it one time. I, I I don't I don't think. I mean that that was a good movie, but it had nothing to do with Bruce Lee. Like it was so. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Um, so hang on a second here. So that, I got to check some of the comments that, um, oh, that's a long one. Yeah. Um, so Alfred said, I remember to be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you, Alfred. All right. Um, Diana Lee in the Sano is featured in Ahsoka series. So is that is that a, a do you know about that stuff? Is that a, a, like a spinoff from um, from Mandalorian or what have you? I don't know, but I don't know about these. I don't things. know. But thanks, Scorch. I'll 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 reach out to Diana and see if she will have the time to come talk about it. Okay, this is a long one. Ricard says uh, three stages. No way, no way is way. Is related to having a curriculum, three stages of Jeet Kune Do, three stages of cultivation. Have fun. The speed bag, the head bag, you can cut up a little shape and butt, heel kick more than you can then start teach technique and become and they tend to share how to do it. Here's down right after X amount of arrows become second inch when you're glad I have fun. I want to get into the card, but uh, yeah. the best way is to explain so big Okay. All right. Um, I see that. Okay, Scorch says that Jeet Kune Do was used in Dragon the Bruce Lee story, um, but only a few times. Mm. Right? Okay. All right. Yeah. So, Ricard, this is a Ritzy. I don't know why he didn't just come on the, um, you know, come into the stream instead of me having to read this long ass <laughs> comment. Right. I mean, I appreciate it, but man, um, take any guy from the street. And so, Ricard, do you talk this to them or do you show it to them? In other words, if somebody's brand new, do you do you start talking to them and telling them that there's a thing called the, the three stages of cultivation in Jeet Kune Do? And then you end the conversation by saying take any guy from the street or do you take the guy? Oh, okay. His family is asleep. So that's why. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. All right. I beg your forgiveness. <laughs> right. But one day we'll get, one day I'll get him back on and we'll, we'll discuss this. Right. All right. So, um, okay. So let's do, um, let's do a couple more. Oh, this is a good one. How do you incorporate the study of other martial arts and combat sports into a Jeet Kune Do curriculum? And what benefits does this bring? <laughs> huh. Interesting. Right? Yeah. How do you incorporate the study of other martial arts and combat sports into a Jeet Kune Do curriculum? And what benefits does this bring? Well, I, you know, I think um, you really don't. Uh, I think Jeet Kune Do, um, in and of itself, um, kind of incorporates, especially with all the, the striking stuff, incorporates pretty much everything um, as far as that goes. The, the, only, the only thing that I've added uh, myself to the curriculum would, would be uh, ground defense stuff. Um, and the way I incorporate the, the ground fighting or jujitsu, if you will, is uh, I incorporate it as a self-defense mechanism so meaning um i'll teach uh how to get up off the ground if you were to be on the ground how not to stay on your back as opposed to the jujitsu way which would be fighting um, from your back um i teach more getting up off your back to get back to a standing position um yeah, things of that nature uh, and then as far as weapons go uh it, it's really more of a filipino martial arts way um, but I keep it, um, it very simple. Uh, don't get into uh, long-winded, complicated. Um, 
uh, so you like don't holiday, do, you don't, holiday you don't, drills. You don't do um, single stick versus double stick, and, and then I do a disarm of the single stick with double stick? No. <laughs> Definitely not. No, not not for a JKD thing. No, no way. Uh-uh. No, no. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll, like like I'll show the 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 basic angles, um, you know, striking angles, and then really it's just you know X pattern, um, the figure eight pattern, you know, like the hourglass type stuff, like like th- things of that nature, just basic, simple. Because, listen, if you have a stick in your hand, if you find a stick of some sort on the street to fight with it, I'm not getting into some crazy, you know, exchange with someone in in a stick fight, right? That's Mm -hmm. very unusual, unless maybe you're in the Philippines or something. But if I grab a stick to defend myself, what what angles am I throwing? I'm throwing angle one or angle two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's really where, where it resides. Now, if you want to, you know, dive deep into it, I encourage a hundred percent, please go seek out, you know, uh, Kali or, you know, you know, the screamer or whatever it is that you want to do and, and go for it, go for the deep dive. I'm all for it. Right. But as far as the JKD thing, that wouldn't be keeping with the principles of JKD. Right. Um, yeah. So like I, so the way, one of the ways that I approach it again, I hate the idea of separating anything. So what's, typical in a self-defense situation what's a common or even typical attack what does somebody try empty-handed what does somebody try to hit you with their, their fist right their yeah, big yeah. Right hand. Mm-hmm. okay so somebody picks up a weapon a 28 inch weapon that's relatively light mm-hmm. what are they going to swing angle one the angle one right so right there we have a connection Mm -hmm. you see so i can relate the two of them if if i if if i was doing an intro lesson and i wanted to explain to somebody okay here's the jkd approach of simplicity right Mm -hmm. to self-defense if somebody doesn't have something in their hand they're they're gonna try that big right hand if they do have something in their hand it's going to be a two-handed thing or a one-handed thing. Yes. Right there, we can start to, to compare and contrast. Yes. And they understand in their intro lesson why I teach Filipino martial arts and Junfan martial arts. Mm-hmm. You see? As a unit. Mm-hmm. So that there is no separation because it's the principle behind the technique mm-hmm. we're going for not always the technique itself sure and and, and i would argue that that the, the grappling arts do the same thing the same complement right so if someone's throwing that that right hand that power right hand at you i can i can i can parry and punch i can intercept and punch right i could do split entry and punch right all that stuff i can also tackle yeah you know, well, so th- th- that's the thing that, that, that I was I was going to ask you about also. So there was a time when the big right hand may have been the only thing that you had to watch out for. But like Bert Richardson says. Nowadays, you got to expect them to rush you mm-hmm. and tackle you. You kind of got to look out, look out for that. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that too becomes part of intro, I mm-hmm. would say. Yeah, yeah I, I, the, the, the fighting, um, well, I shouldn't say the fighting, the, the world has become a much better fighting, um, people have become better fighters, right? With, 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 with the growth of, of uh, the UFC, um, YouTube, all that stuff, mm-hmm. um, the world has definitely become more affluent at fighting. So as, as people that professionally do this, like us, right. Um, <clears throat> we have to teach the public to be a little more sophisticated in their defense of that. Yep. Uh, and I have a, a good example of that. Um, when I was a police officer in New York, we had an officer and this was probably uh, 
in the early 2000s, we had an officer um, working at the bus terminal where um, the, there was a domestic dispute between a boyfriend, girlfriend. I don't know if they were married or not. And the officer got in the middle of it and the guy put him in a rear naked choke, put him on the ground. The guy was on his knees and had a rear naked choke when the cop cop had no idea how to get out of it. I mean, it was already sunk in. It wasn't like he was going to get out of it anyway. Yeah. Um, officers showed up on scene. They couldn't get him off. You know, they ended up hitting the guy uh, with the baton several times in his head to get him to release the choke. Mm -hmm. um, after that, it was like, okay, we, we need to learn how to defend attacks like this. Yeah. Okay. Because this guy wasn't an MMA fighter. He just probably saw it on a UFC fight or something right. and, and was able to apply it to, to this officer. Yeah. So, yeah, we have to be more sophisticated in our defense because the public is more sophisticated in their fighting abilities. Right. And, and that is a JKD principle because if we go back to the 60s, Bruce Lee was designing what he was doing and his approach, right, to approximate the reality of a street encounter. Mm -hmm. That was the idea. Mm -hmm. Well, the, if the nature of the street encounter has changed, wouldn't then the nature of the Jeet Kune Do preparation for it change also? It has to. It has to. Yeah. That's called evolution. Right. It has to. And, and, and that's why I think JKD is is still the, the best martial art out there because it, it it allows itself to encompass all these things. Yeah, it, it, it comes built in. Right. That avenue for exploration and evolution comes built in. Right. Right. It's not built into Shotokan. No. Okay. It's not, it's not at all. It wasn't even built into jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Now, now uh, leg locks are a thing. My understanding is that uh, in the early days of BJJ, leg, leg locks were frowned upon. Oh, yeah. You got, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got rocks right. thrown at you and stuff. Yeah. yeah. You did that in so, a competition. So, Forget so, it. Remember, remember mm -hmm. when, when in the early, early years of, of martial arts, kicking was a no no. That was dirty fighting. Oh, yeah. Oh, you kick like a girl, right? <laughs> yeah. That was a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Kicking was dirty fighting until. Yeah. You know, Chinese yep. Kung Fu films started showing up and then people were like, wow, this kicking mm -hmm. stuff is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. right? So everything evolves. Yeah. And Jeet Kune Do's job, one of Jeet Kune Do's jobs is to keep up with it. Otherwise, you get passed out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and, and you're no longer relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Bruce Lee... 50 years after he's passed away is still relevant yes so why isn't his art why can't his art also be relevant it can only be if 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 we if i can't well we didn't do enough in the early days to ensure that it could pass the test of time yeah bruce lee's greatness has surpassed has passed yeah. the test of time because he's still an icon so yeah so so what do we so what do we do from here like like you know how, how do we because we have such a such a diamond here right, right. jkd to me is is such a is such a diamond and you know, how, do, how do we express this to to the right. world to, to get people to see this that that's so, the, the struggle so, that i have so there's a there's a there's a lesson that's taught there's a a a, a, a speech by a guy named um russell russell conwell i think it is called acres of diamonds okay right you know that story? Know. i'm gonna write this down i don't know this. okay right yeah so basic story is the, the basic lesson or theme of the story is the grass always appears greener on the other side okay that's the basic right that's the basic um lesson that's taught in the acres of diamonds right so look it up here's what i've done I did a friggin' podcast episode on that, mm -hmm. but nobody tunes in for those for those episodes because it's this guy talking to the camera. <laughs> That's not entertaining, they, right? They want to see. I think it least, is. They want to see at least. Yeah, but you. But see, you're <laughs> you're my market, right? But, but there's not enough of you. 
That's why on the broadcast, there's less than 500 people subscribed. On yeah. the dialogues, there's 2,000, four times mm. as many, mm. right? Why? Because this is entertainment. You get to mm. see two knuckleheads, right, spouting mm. off on, on topics. Mm. But when somebody sits down and tries to, to put a little bit of education and show not just the general public, but also his Jeet Kune Do colleagues, that we have been, like you're saying, we have been standing in a field of diamonds for decades mm -hmm. without realizing it. Yeah. So I took that and trans and and took that story and tra and and transferred that into a lecture on Jeet Kune Do. The same way mm -hmm. you take definite chief aim. Definite chief aim is a Napoleon Hill principle from laws of success or think and grow rich, depending on where, where you first uh, come across it. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me, hold on a second here. Think and grow rich, a perennial bestseller that doesn't even have to be advertised, right? Okay. It, you know, it, it sells very well every year and always has. And one of its major principles is definiteness of purpose. And if you do a Google search, Bruce Lee comes up. Really? So Napoleon Hill is known throughout the marketing world as the success, one of the thought leaders in the success mindset. Okay. Which is an important aspect of personal development. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that if you look for examples of this, you will come across Bruce Lee and his note entitled My Definite Chief Aim. Wow. Yes. So how do you put that out there? You do a freaking podcast episode on it. <laughs> right? I know a guy who did just that. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> right? But what, a hundred people watch it? Maybe. And, yeah. right? and then they don't even... and it. I try to keep it to less than 15 minutes. They mm -hmm. don't even watch seven minutes of it. Yeah. Right. You know, now I could sit here and, and, and complain about that, but actually I have to find a way to make the education part more entertaining. Yes. And that, that is, that's a struggle for anyone yes. who is trying to inform people about something. That's yeah. why, you will hear the term infotainment. Mm -hmm. right? You will hear the term edutainment. Mm -hmm. right? uh, Patrick uh, Ben David has a, a, an outfit called valuetainment. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Valuetainment. Valuetainment. Okay. So, so I might seem like I'm like like I'm I'm uh, what do they say uh, bitching and moaning, but I'm not. I'm well, not. I, yeah. I I realize that. It's up to me. I have to make it so that people want to tune in on Wednesdays at six o'clock or, you know, hit the notification bell on the YouTube so mm -hmm. that they know that, okay, here's Dwight talking stuff that I definitely am going to learn something from every Wednesday. It's yeah. up to me, right? I, I, can't, I can't sit back and just whatever. Well, I appreciate it because I, I definitely learn a lot watching you and, and all the other guests too. Um, <clears throat> it's brought in my horizons of JKD in, in and of itself, aside from, you know, anything else, you know, when you yeah. talk about like self-development stuff yeah. and, and all that. So I, I know, I know it's benefited me. So. Well, I appreciate you for that. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. I, um, I, I watch the guys who are, the guys who were popular in social media, right? So it's the same way that in technical aspects of JKD, we could be taught to watch somebody and absorb what is useful, mm -hmm. right? Okay, well, if I'm seeking to be the Joe Rogan that Jeet Kune Do when it comes to podcasting, mm -hmm. I gotta watch what the top podcasters are doing okay absorb what is useful for Th that philosophy right those tenets of jeet kundo as i call them 
have to be taken if necessary mm-hmm. outside of the realm of martial art yes because they are they are guidelines for living mm-hmm. right they're guidelines for 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 a, a productive life on the whole so yeah mm-hmm. got to be done anyhow all right let's um let's wrap this up here my friend okay um and uh we'll see how this does I, I, I appreciate your coming on and uh, thanks to everybody who uh, showed up and uh, commented and, and what have you. We will, um, I'll, I'll let you guys know what's going on next week. If I ever go back to Miami, I might just stay right here. and call <laughs> I love this setup. <laughs> That's great. I'll have to come visit you there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Paul, have a great weekend. All right. Tune in. You guys have a great weekend. I'll Thank you. you. Have fun. Okay, man. Take care. Take care. All right. So that was uh, Jeet Kune Do Debates, um, episode seven. Uh, thank you again to everybody who uh, chimed in. Um, comments were, were, were great. Helped to keep the, the show going uh, for sure. All right. Okay. So um, Wednesday... Yeah, this Wednesday, yeah, is good. So I'll, I'll be back with another um, issue of the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. I can tell you next uh, next Friday, we'll be talking with uh, Mick Tully, who we postponed from um, from last week. So um, 6 o'clock next Friday will be uh, uh, Mick Tully. If you want to support me, you can go to jkdrebel.com, click on the Rebel Gear link. That's where you'll see stuff like the coffee mug and the t-shirt long sleeve short sleeve sweatshirt all that good stuff um also if you go over to the youtube channel the g Kundo dialogues youtube channel click on the join link and you can take a look at um, the different um, membership levels you can become a sponsor of the channel at uh, paypal.me slash unified ma miami paypal.me slash unified ma miami the G Kundo Journey Volume 1, Rob edited version, is still available. But of course, the best thing you guys can do to help out is to share this video with friends, family, colleagues, all that. Spread the word about the G Kundo Dialogues and the G Kundo Debates. Okay. So once again, thanks very much for everybody who, who uh, chimed in. And uh, this is Dwight Woods, the G Kundo Rebel, signing off. Have a great uh, weekend. Talk soon. Take care.